Hi, this is Mr. Rubenstein. This is part seven of what I think is an eight part series of tutorials about how to do the Math B Regents using uh, June 2008 as the example. We're up to question number 30. It says the probability of rain on last day of July is 90%. Um, if it remains constant for the first seven days of August, what's the probability that will rain at least six of those seven days? Uh, at least six out of seven days. This is what's known as binomial probability or uh, uh, Bernoulli, uh, uh, Bernoulli probability. So we're talking about seven days. Just to give you a feel for this, the probability of rain is 90%. So I'm, I'm going to write it as a fraction. You can, you can do a decimal if you want. which means the probability of not raining is 1 minus that, which is 1 tenth. Now over a seven day period, um, to have, let's say, um, it, saying at, at least at least six out of seven, it's really two questions in one. It's the probability of getting exactly six or and for or you're going to add the two probabilities together getting exactly seven days of rain now getting exactly six days of rain uh, out of seven days the, the idea is there are a lot of ways for it to happen for instance you could have rain 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 and then no rain or you could have rain 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 rain, no rain, rain. And each of these individually would have a probability of 9 tenths to the 6th power times 1 tenth to the 1st. And even though it's in a different order here, when you combined the common things, you would get this also. So the probability of getting exactly 6 days of rain is actually going to be 9 tenths to the 6. And we have to put a coefficient out here for the number of different ways that this can happen. And that's where combinations comes in. The number of ways that could happen is going to be 7C6, which actually equals 7. Same thing happens for, for exactly 7 days of rain. We're going to have 9 tenths to the 7th times 1 tenth to the 0. And out in front of here, remember this one came as 7c6. This coefficient is going to be 7c7, which using the calculator is the number 1. Um, now you can run this all through the calculator. And as a decimal, you'll, you'll get 0 0.8503. Three oh five six. Uh, for the regions, I think you could round, unless they say, you could round to four decimal places. If you do it as fractions, you could actually leave it as a as a fraction also. Okay, that does it for question number thirty. Uh, question thirty one. They have a uh, equation for a circle x plus four squared uh, plus y minus two squared equals eighty one, and they want to uh, dilate this by a factor of two each of the points. Well, um, and they want to know the coordinates of the center and the radius, length of the radius. Uh, just a little bit about circles. The center of the circle, if you change the sign of this and of this, you'll get the center of, of the original circle. So the center of the original circle is minus four, two. And the square root of this number is going to be the radius of the circle. So it's going to go from the center point, you go 9 right, 9 left, 9 up, 9 down. That's, that's your original circle. But what they want to do is dilate each of the points by, uh, all the points by a factor of 2. So what that would do is that would move the, the old center The old center was minus 4, 2. 
So the new center, when you dilate by a factor of 2, the x and y coordinate both get multiplied by 2. So there's our first answer. And when everything gets doubled, the radius gets, gets, doubled, uh, gets doubled also. So if the old radius was 9, the new radius is going to be 18. And that's all they wanted. They didn't want the new equation or anything like that. And that does it for question number 31. For question number 32, they want you to create a, um, a sine curve that has an amplitude of 3 and a wavelength of pi. Okay, they want you to, to draw one, which means you actually don't need to, um, you don't need to even create the, the equation. Amplitude of 3, wavelength of pi. There's a lot of different answers to this question. But if 0 is here and 2 pi, which is like 360 degrees, is there, and pi is in the middle, and if the amplitude is 3, it means it's going to go up 3 and down 3 from the center. Now, so it's going to go up and down like that. But since the um, wavelength is pi, it needs to go through its whole cycle between 0 and pi. So what I'll do is I'll put a point right in the middle because it hits its middle point um, at the beginning, the end, and in the middle. Its high point is halfway between there, and its low point is halfway between there. Now let's see what they want, if they want it, how far they want it graphed. Um, draw a possible um, using the interval 0 to 2 pi. And they, they said it does pass through the origin. So we are going to need a little bit more. Um, I'm going to actually draw it twice. So to, to make that a more accurate graph, I'll draw in these nice five guideline points. There are other answers to this question. You actually could have graphed it um, if you wanted to. You could have graphed it going down first. It doesn't say. It just says the amplitude is 3. So it could have a negative uh, be like y equals negative uh, 3 sine. But um, it's not. You could do it either way. OK, that does it for that question. Question number 33 on part 4. This was worth 6 points. Uh, they want you to solve for x in this log equation. And a couple of things you have to know for a question like this. One of them is just what log means. For instance, this fact, 2 to the 5th, equals 32. That's equivalent to saying log base 2 of 32 equals 5. Those are equivalent. And you could always take, you can take any equation that kind of looks like this, log a, B equals C. You're always allowed to rearrange it to say A to the C power equals B. And, and you can go backwards with that also. Uh, another thing is that there are three log rules. One of the log rules is log base anything of X plus log base same thing of Y is equal to log base B of XY. And uh, there's two other log rules. Log base b of x minus log base b of y equals log base b of x over y. And the third log rule is log base b of x to the n equals n log base b of x. Those rules work in reverse also. Uh, applying it to this question, use the second log rule to rewrite this as log base 3 of x squared minus 4 over x plus 2 equals 2. We can now rearrange this to say 3 to the second equals x squared minus 4 over x plus 2, which is 9 equals x squared minus 4 over x plus 2. At a time, so to be continued in the last part of this tutorial series.